Once again, most of what I'm about to say is from my new book, The Common Sense Ethics of a Blue Collar Philosopher. To begin with, the founding fathers of the United States understood that the only way to violate another man's rights was by the initiation of force. And they expressed this thought perfectly at the beginning of the Declaration of Independence when they wrote, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, etc. So do, what does the word unalienable mean? It means something that cannot be taken away, period. Not by other individuals, not by groups of, indi of voting individuals, and most importantly, not by groups of individuals called the government. Since the only way to violate another's unalienable rights is by the initiation of force, which also happens to be the only way to completely annihilate any chance for morality, then the initiation of force must be banned. This is why the only legitimate purpose of government is to enact laws banning the initiation of force and then promote the general welfare by helping things run as smoothly as possible within that context. The banning of force is why we need the armed services, police, and judicial system. The armed services are needed as a way to protect citizens from foreign invasion, external force. The police are needed uh, to protect citizens from the criminal element, internal force. And the courts are needed as a way to uphold laws and objectively adjudicate differences among its citizens, which includes enforcing such things as the protection of copyrights, uh, up upholding contracts, etc. Indirect force. These are the three primary obligations of the government. Everything else is secondary and falls under the guise of promoting the general welfare. So what does promote the general welfare mean? It means passing objective laws that help things run as smoothly as possible without violating any citizen's unalienable rights. A good modern day example of this would be traffic laws. Without such things as, uh, as traffic lights, driving would not only be completely chaotic, but also extremely dangerous as well. Just imagine, whenever you came to an intersection, you would almost certainly have to slow down to a crawl or even stop completely. Just imagine if there were no laws saying which side of the road you can drive on, or no laws regulating the size of vehicles that can be driven on the roads. These types of laws help things run as smoothly as possible without violating anyone's unalienable rights. Now, many people throughout American history have used the term promote the general welfare from the beginning of the Constitution as a way uh, to give government nearly complete control over every aspect of American life. But this is certainly not what the Founding Fathers had in mind. Yes, they wanted government to promote the general welfare, but not at the expense of violating unalienable individual rights. James Madison, the main author of the Constitution, put it like this. With respect to the words general welfare, I have always regarded them as qualified by the details of the powers enumerated in the Constitution connected with them. To take them in a literal and unlimited sense would be a metamorphosis of the Constitution into a character which there is a host of proof uh, was not contemplated by its creators. Madison also said, and please listen to this carefully, if Congress can employ money indefinitely to the general welfare, and are the sole and supreme judges of the general welfare, they may take care of religion in their own hands. They may appoint teachers in every state, county, and parish, and pay for them out of the public treasury. They may take into their own hands the education of children, establishing in like uh, manner schools throughout the Union. They may assume the provisions of the poor. They may undertake the regulation of all roads other than post roads. In short, everything from the highest object of state legislation down to the most minute object of police would be thrown under the power of Congress. Were the power of Congress to be established in the latitude contended for, it would subvert the very foundations and transmute the very nature of the limited government established by the people of America. In other words, promoting the general welfare does not mean given the government unlimited power to do anything it believes would promote the general welfare. It means promoting the general welfare without violating individual unalienable rights. If it didn't, uh, then unalienable rights wouldn't have been mentioned uh, by the founders in the first place. It's absolutely amazing 
how these two quotes from Madison seem to have been completely lost to history. Obviously, politicians both on the, uh, on the left and on the right have ignored these quotes for generations in order to force their own agendas on the American people. One of the main problems with modern American politics lies in the fact that everyone's forgotten that the Constitution was written in the historical context of the Declaration of Independence, not in an ideological vacuum. In other words, the Declaration of Independence is, in essence, the preamble to the Constitution. It was to be the moral foundation of liberty, while the Constitution was to be the legal foundation of liberty. I quote, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government, be government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it, and to institute new government, etc. The Declaration of Independence. The Constitution was written as a legal document to secure man's unalienable rights to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness as expressed in the Declaration of Independence. But unfortunately, Americans at large have forgotten this. And because Americans at large have forgotten this, so have their uh, politicians. One of the reasons this has happened may sound simplistic, but it's still nevertheless true. When elected to public office, these politicians take an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States, not the Declaration of Independence. In my opinion, this seemingly little thing makes all the difference. Nowhere in the Constitution does it say we have the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Nowhere does it say we have any unalienable rights at all. It does state we have rights, but it does not state they're unalienable. This was a huge mistake. To some, this, uh, this might just sound like I'm arguing semantics, but because that one word was left out, a black hole of servitude was inserted. When taken out of the historical context of the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution can be the legal basis of communism, socialism, or just about any other form of government you can think of. All you would need is enough votes to make it so, which is exactly what has been happening since the beginning of the 20th century. But when taken in conjunction with the principles set forth in the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution's only basis can be freedom for the individual and laissez-faire capitalism. To be human is to possess unalienable rights. And as the Declaration states, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. Until the American people demand government officials take an oath to not only uphold the Constitution, but the moral principles set forth in the Declaration of Independence, unalienable rights will not be recognized. And they will certainly not be recognized as long as the General Welfare Clause of the Constitution keeps being bastardized out of recognition by those in power. Thank you.